All right. Whoa. How are you? I hope you are doing well. What I want you to do first off is I want you to set your belief system aside. What you believe in, set it aside. If you believe in the Creator, set it aside. If you believe in Jesus, set it aside. If you believe in Allah, Kumbaya, whatever, just set it aside. I'm going to tell you what these blue beans did when they came down. They tricked us. And I'm going to show you with the scripture again. All right? And I've got safety glasses on because this is dangerous. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to open your Bible and follow along. I'll read out a scripture and you pause it and look it up and then you'll be reading it right with me. You'll see it in your Bible. And you'll know the difference between when I'm talking and I'm reading. Alright, let's go to Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And we're going from 21 to 23. Now, where did Jesus come from? Now, it's important to understand that Ptolemy, giving the Egyptians and the Hebrews that lived amongst the Egyptians at 300 BC, or negative 300, he created Crustus. What you call the modern version Christ. So before your your Jesus Christ walked the earth, there was a dummy Christ set up for the Egyptians to worship by Ptolemy. He called it the study of salvation, soterology. Now I've made plenty of videos about this. Most of you might have seen those videos, and that's why you're up to this point. Now, here's Vespasian's crack. Now, Vespasian is the emperor. Now, if I rule over there, that's my kingdom. I'm king there. If I beat these people and these people, I then have three kingdoms. I rule over three kingdoms. I have an empire. I am then an emperor. If I expand with those three kingdoms, you get what I'm saying, right? So, Emperor Vespasian, whose son is Titus. Vespasian ruled for ten years. Vespasian dies. Titus rules for two years and finishes off his father's work, the destruction of Jerusalem, 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 however you want to say it. This is actual history. This isn't some bull crap. Dunk your head in the water. Somebody's going to forgive your sins. This is actual history. Paul, a Hebrew that didn't want to die, was well educated, spoke two languages, well, spoke many languages, says to Vespasian, I'll serve you. Vespasian says, I want you to write it like this. Paul says, okay, I'll do it. That's why the Vespasian's family name is Flavian. Flavian Vespasian. That's why you have Flavian Josephus. That's why you never hear about Flavian Paul. Oh, Paul dies. Hung up, or however, when I was Peter, whatever. Paul is Vespasian, or what we call the Piso family. There's plenty of history to back that up too. It's hard. You'll have to read a long time. And this is where they get there. Now, listen, it's the study of salvation. To trick the slave, you have to trick him into believing his prophecy already happened. Listen. This Matthew 1 and 21. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Oh, there's a three there. Oh, what does that say? 
i.e. Savior. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament. Now, we'll just, we'll just dance around. Isaiah 43 and 11. Now, this is what the prophet Isaiah says. I, even I, am the Lord. The mouthpiece of the Lord says that this is what the Lord says. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me is no Savior. Now let's go back to Matthew, because you got to understand this. This is why you believe in Jesus. 22, Matthew 1 and 22. All you got to do is pause it and turn the page. If you're not reading along in your Bible, don't bother typing anything on the page. Now all this was done that it might, might, it may be, it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bring forth a son, which shall call his name, they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, let me ask you an in-depth Christian question. Which prophet said that? Which prophet are they talking about? Let's go. Let's, now turn your Bible to the prophet Isaiah, which should have been in already. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah chapter 7. Let's go to chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now hold on for a second. This is the prophet Isaiah saying, Emmanuel will be born to a virgin. Now this is somebody in the book of Matthew saying that this, pro- this, this, this act happened. So forth because the prophet said this would, would happen. So this act must be p- fulfilling, fulfilling what the prophet had spoken. But they tell you here that Jesus means Savior. I think it's kind of funny how the same prophet said that the Lord is the only Savior. Let's, let's just pretend. If I was the Lord, and I gave the angels free will. Now, man doesn't think the angels have free will, but shit, there's fallen angels, so they must have free will. So, Let's pretend I'm God. Am I going to give the power of salvation to one of these angels that can turn? Am I going to give it to a man that somebody can turn away? Why would I give that special power, that special ability to anything? That doesn't make any sense. Any of these people or beings can turn away from me at their own choice. What we call Satan fall? Yes. What we call the dragon fall? Yes. What we call Samyaza fall? Yes. What we call Azazel fall? Yes. What we call Lucifer fall? Yes. So don't give me any shit about, well, angels don't have free will. Everything has free will. The animals will be judged. Don't you get it? He's looking for a particular set of life that will listen to him wholeheartedly. Like Gabriel, like Michael. Two great examples. So, the prophet Isaiah whom in Matthew they claim to be fulfilling his prophecy by a a, a living Savior, the prophet already said the only Savior is he that created us. He that created us already walked the earth in the time of Moses, in the time of Abraham. He He didn't come out of a vagina then. Why would he do something like that when he constantly tells you, nothing created me? 
Let's pretend I'm God. If I was God and I told you nothing created me and I wanted to come to earth, the last thing I would do is be born. That meant something created him in front of you. Then that would cause confusion. How is logic left? How is logic left the earth? Oh, that's right. That same prophet Isaiah said it's because of the morning star. The morning star fell and tricked the earth. Shall I read that? Let's go to Isaiah 14. See, this is the same prophet that the New Testament deems good. Your prophecy of Jesus is Isaiah's prophecy. Isaiah only says it's a sign. But the New Testament wants you to believe that it's more than a sign. Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Who said Lucifer's name isn't in the Bible? Son of the morning, O day star. What does it say? O day star. Or, or O day star. Son of the morning. That means it's a light that shines in light. It's a blinding light. It shines like a star when there's already light. See, we don't see stars because they're still there. We don't see them because the sun's out. The sun's light is so bright it dims the other stars. But the day star is brighter than the sun. Is it? Doesn't Jesus call himself the morning star? And what does the morning star do? Since you're too hard-headed to understand the words that are just right here. How art the morning star, how art thou cut down to the ground? This is Jesus. This is your Lucifer. Your Luciferian doctrine to curve the prayers from heaven. Which didst weaken the nations. The sun rises. Here's me laying down. When I wake up, I rise. Do you see that arc that comes with my head? My head's in this position and eventually it comes. It's just like the sun. The sun rises. We're tricked into thinking we're spinning around in space. Why isn't everybody walking around in a pile of throw up? Why isn't, why isn't cleaning up throw up the greatest paying job in the world? Because we're not spinning. Your head is spinning. It's all right here. It's all right here, but you don't want to read. Well, my mom told me this. My dad told me this. This guy with a lot of money said this. Your Jesus said, your Jesus said a rich man would have to push a, 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 a camel through 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 a through a needle, the eye of a needle, before he even get a chance to go to heaven. He'd have to give all his stuff away. Look how many rich men preach Jesus. You don't find let we don't even have to bring up God on that level. I mean, what have you guys really done? That is so bad. You rape someone, you sleep with your cousin, and you know it was your cousin. You create a baby with your cousin, and, and you know later there's going to be some weird... Listen, did you rob somebody, did you kill somebody? We all have to face that on Judgment Day. Did you sleep with a man? You're going to have to face that on Judgment Day. Nobody's going to take it away from you. Did you sleep with a woman? Are you a woman that slept with a woman? Are you a woman that slept with a series of women? Did your brother impregnate you? We'll have to face these things. Did you steal from your parents? And blame it on your brother. Now they hate him and they'll talk to him. We'll have to deal with these things. Nobody's going to take these things away from us. These are our burdens. We create wicked acts. 
we create righteous acts. This Bible tells you over and over again, Israel, or children of the Creator, that you are the Messiahs. And if you think there's some other guy coming to save you from your sins, then you're not doing your job out in the world. People, people get activated and they get on the phone with me and they start preaching to me. I say, I just made a series of hour-long videos. I don't want to be preached to. You're supposed to go into your community and start preaching to the people that you don't know. I don't care if you just vent to them and in some way it's almost like you're talking about righteousness. It's your task, your duty. This Christ is Lucifer. Nobody prays to the Creator. Everybody prays to Christ. People that worship Allah no Christ exists. They don't they don't worship the Creator. Allah's the moon god. Read sometimes. Yahweh the moon god is Allah. Isaiah seven and fourteen. Where does this come from? This is the unification of Paka, which is the northern kingdom, and Syria, who's controlled by resin. Now, when we go deep into history, that's not true. Oh, it is in Scripture, isn't it? Samaria wants to be in Jerusalem. This is the end effect, isn't it? Tigler Pilsleth the third is controlling everything from behind the scenes. Assyria wants unification with Judea to control the temple. So they start with the northern kingdom, with agreements to get the city intermingled. When this starts to happen, Paka wants, and Rezin wants to go up against Jerusalem to just take it. But that goes against Tigler Pilsleth's plan. Tigler Pilsleth wants to control it as a finance hole. So what he does is... Tigler Pilsleth waits for Jew, the Jews to ask him for help. And that's what's written here to a degree. Now, Azza is the king of Judea. And he prays to the Lord. And it says in verse 11, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 11 ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God ask it either in the depth or in the height above but Azza said I will not ask neither will I tempt the Lord and he said hear ye now O house of David is it a small thing for you to weary men but will it will ye weary my God also Will you weary your God as you weary men? I said ask for a sign. You won't just give me a sign. So now I'll give you a sign like you've put it. You ever ask somebody a question, they give you a question? That is what's happened. And the Lord has shown his annoyance. Fourteen. Now here's what the Lord gives him. Therefore... The Lord himself shall give you a sign. It does not mean the Lord's going to come down and be the sign. It says he shall give you the bat signal. He shall turn the light on in the clouds so that you all know. And this is what you're not understanding. Behold, a virgin. Now, if you go into virgin, it does not mean someone that's unplugged. It means someone that's of marrying age. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, that is where we get the prophecy from Matthew chapter 1 and 23. From 1 and 22 is 
the word, the prophet Isaiah being brought up. Without respect for anything else Isaiah says, except for that little clip right there. That's completely taken out of top context when you just take 7 and 14 by itself. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign and be it. Uh, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. When you translate Emmanuel, it's God with us. That doesn't mean God himself is with you physically. That means God is with the people. This is the time to rise. Your ancestors, my ancestors, were rebels. Rise! They keep telling you it's the great rebellion. You go to school. And all you got to do is show up. That's participation. To rebel, all you got to do is not show. The frog must leap out of the boiling water. You must stop thinking it's cool. You must realize it's boiling and leap out of the water. We all know that America is the boiling pot. There's no point in leaping to Canada. This Bible says go south. Now, that would be an excellent place to stop, but no. We see in the next chapter, we see a birth happening. And Emmanuel's name is not the name of the baby. So that is not the time for them to rise. Now, the important thing for this conversation is not the name that's birthed, it's the actions that these men did. When the baby was being born and named Quick the Plunder in translation, the men didn't stop to record the baby's birth like they were supposed to. They recorded the altar of the destroyed city Damascus. You must understand the laws of an altar to the Creator. You are not to have any yoon, any sketched image. No drawing, no painting, anything on the altar at all. They took an image of another God and placed it on the altar in the house of the Lord. Which brought the destruction years later. Now, it states, 8 and 1, Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write with the man's pen concerning Mahar Shalal Hazbaz. And I took unto me a faithful witness to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jer Jeber-Eshia. And I went under the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord unto me, Call his name Mahar Shalal Hazbaz. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Now, the people of Damascus was switched but the Sumerians that were at Damascus ended up at Jerusalem. So I guess they only wanted to move one group of people. So, history separates Shalom and Asser with his popular name, Genghis Kong. In the Golden Horde. But soon, I've been told, but I forgot. Soon I'll have the name of Tigalith Pilsler the third, not his historical name, but his popular name. And we'll be, if we get time to, we'll be going into this too. Now, when we understand what was going on, we can turn back to Kings, and it's going to tell you that they put the uh, they put the pen to the altar 
instead of writing about the child. Now, right here, in the precepts, 8 and 1 and 8 and 2, I took with me the faithful witness to record. It says 2 Kings 16 and 10. So we'll go to 2 Kings. All you got to do is pause and turn your Bible. 2 Kings 16 and 10. And King Azza went to Damascus to meet Tigalith Pilsler III, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was in Damascus. And the King Azza sent Uriah the, wit, the priest the fashion of the altar. They were there to record the baby's name. They recorded the altar. When you keep reading, they took this back to Jerusalem. Look, 14. We'll just skip to 14. And he brought also thereof the brazen image which was before the Lord from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of the Lord, and put the altar on the north side and started worshiping the king of the north. I finally understand it now. Wow. I got my own epiphany on tape. That's great. Now I understand why. I mean, completely. That's why the battle of the king of the north and the king of the south will happen pretty soon, history-wise. Three to five years. Maybe 10 to 15 years. I don't know. I don't think it's going to go 10 to 15. Yeah, three to five. Seems like three to five. Okay, so, when we stay in Isaiah chapter 8 and 1, it says, For the name Mahashalhashbaz, turn to page <laughs> Habakkuk 2 and 2, right? It's like, uh, so this is how you do this. So now you go to, now you know the topic. It's about the baby being born, right? The sign, the signal. All right, we see Mahar Shalhabaz is born, but we don't see Emmanuel, and this is why we're turning the page. <laughs> Elevator music. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> we'll just start with two and one. Habakkuk chapter two. Verse 1, I will stand upon my watch. I will set me up and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and I will and what I will answer when I am reproved or judged. So he's talking about the Lord or the creator. Verse 2, and the Lord answered and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So when you understand this, now we all know from just reading, you don't comprehend things just right off the bat. And this is what they mean. He that comprehends it. It doesn't matter if you read. If you read a stop sign, you don't know it says stop, then you ain't going to stop, right? Right. So him that comprehends run for the vision is yet it didn't happen yet vision is yet for an appointed time when this is written it's telling you it's not happened yet so when Habakkuk lives and you think Jesus was born or will be born in a little bit he's still telling you it hasn't happened yet but at the end it shall speak. No, not in, 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 in what? Zero. The turnover from BC to, to a AC bullcrap. No, at the end, at the end of days. And not lie. Now, I'll just start over. At the end of days, remember, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. It shall not, excuse me, it will not tarry. Behold, for his soul which is lifted up is not 
upright in him but it shall see but the just shall live by his faith that is a very interesting thing the just shall live by whose faith you've got to understand what is going on this is a prophecy he also because he transgresseth by wine he is a proud man neither neither keepeth up at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people shall not all these things take up a parable against him wink who says parables the Lord's telling you in a poetic way through this pop prophet Habakkuk who says parables well in, in real life Manobeaz Mano Baal Zeus, Baal and Zeus in his name, the financier of the rebels at the time when your Jesus would have lived, who was actually James the Just, the righteous teacher, the righteous teacher, Mano Baaz was the financier. How do slaves get money? Who says the parable, a rich man has to go through a camel? I mean, has, has, has to pass a camel through a needle. Mono Baez actually said this stuff. Because he did those actions. He depleted his father's hordes. Get it? Genghis Kong and the Golden Horde. Mono Baez. Mono Baal, Zeus the second. And his hordes depleting. when you're supposed to understand this at the time when the cities are surrounded by armies you're supposed to freaking run you are supposed to be as he goats and lead your families into the mountains go to Bible Hub you have your you have your your computer open type in be as he goats I'll do it since you're lazy, you just think this is just a joke, entertainment. Be as he goes. So that takes us to Jeremiah 50. So type in Jeremiah 50. I believe it says 15 Let's go to 15 -8. And don't do the gateway. Don't go to Bible Gateway. Go to Bible Hub. Now, people tell you only use one Bible, this or that. I like to go with the whole KJV just because I can see the attack of Christianity very clearly. Now, when you go to Jeremiah 50, it says, in the New International Version, flee out of Babylon, leave the land of the Babylonians, and be like goats that lead the flock. Okay? Now, the New Living Translation. I'm not saying this is a good Bible, but listen to the translation. Now, flee from Babylon. Leave the land of the Babylonians. Like male goats at the head of the flock, 
lead my people home again. Why does it say again? Why does it say again? English Standard. Now, to back up this translation, type in Catholic Chaldean Church and it shall verify with your own eyes. Flee from the midst of Babylon and go out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as male goats before the flock. The land of the Chaldeans is the extent of Hollywood, the witchcraft that is over us through TV and radio, the waves that interfere with all the vibrations that are natural. We must be as goats and lead his people home again. I don't care if people say, oh, this is from the pa uh, past and when they left. This is the daughter of Babylon and it says again. I think you better watch who you let translate your Bible. Because they don't want you to go home. They want you to sit in front of them. Because when you get nabbed and you go out of sight, then they know to be worried. You're a perimeter defense for them because you're poor and Negro. And Canaanites are trying to take your identity, calling themselves Amorite Hebrews. Amorites are Hamites and Hebrews are Shem. You can't be from two forefathers. Shared heritage makes us Afro-Asian, nothing more. We're not cousins, we're not brothers, we're not related. Now, this Bible says we're supposed to leave when the sign of Emmanuel is given. The Irish came over here and enslaved Negroes and took them back and sold them to Europeans in 1613. 400 years from 1613 is the year 2013. 2013, a child was born. He was named Messiah. He was not named Emmanuel. He was not named Christ. He was named Messiah. There are thousands of children born every year named either Emmanuel, Emmanuel, or even Messiah. This is the only one child that the government has attacked within six months of his birth on his name. When we go into this Bible, back to the prophet that tells you all the signs of the time at hand. They state the government shall be on the child's neck. That's how you verify which child is the sign. People tell me, well, this rapper had a child named Messiah. Who gives a shit? Some sell-off Freemason dances and jiggles his ass for money. Named his son Messiah. How long do you think that rapper will wait to encourage his son to have sexual intercourse? He's a rapper. They take pride in, I was nine when I lost my... You want to call that Messiah? You're Babylonian. Like he's Babylonian. Like I'm Babylonian as well. But it's putting aside those practices and traditions that we can see what's real. I make these videos 
so you can have a chance on Judgment Day. Nothing more, nothing less. Nobody gives me money. People have helped me, and they've been very generous. And thank you to those families that let me stay with them in Texas. But that's aside from this. A woman once said to me, a man can't stay in my house if he doesn't worship the, the Ten Commandments. Well, the first commandment is, thou shalt have no other God, and she worshipped Christ. If she can't understand, she's in the same predicament as you that can't understand. Inquisition is accept my God or die. This land was stolen from my forefathers along with many other generations of people that call themselves black that actually have brown skin. It was stolen in the name of Christ. And now you're upset if I'm not Christian because I don't believe in forgiveness because my God said an eye for an eye. So Christianity is the opposite of what my God says. Christianity is always the opposite of what my God says. Hence, Christians are enemies to my God. My God doesn't say be enemies to them. He says, come out from amongst them. And now we're going to go over some stuff that we have here.